Hi guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Needles, the channel where we continue to break down the amazing anime season that is spring 2021. We are sadly speeding towards the end now. We're getting towards that final quarter. I have got some good news. I have started on my wrap up video, kind of. I scripted it. I'm halfway there, okay? In about two weeks time, I will be releasing my, as expected, spring wrap up of the season one of my top three anime of this period what am i planning to break down next season and what am i watching in my personal time in this video you will have all of this given to you hopefully i can persuade you to watch some new stuff hopefully i can also enlighten you to what is coming your way a feast for the eyes it is a summer of isekai however there is one detective story coming our way that i will be breaking down that might be a little hint but if you haven't looked at the season just yet Make sure you tune into that video because you are probably going to be interested in this story. But yes, make sure you are subscribed to the channel or you will definitely miss this video because my YouTube doesn't really do very well in the way of notifying anybody. There is a Discord for you to also get notifications on. You get a notification sent to your phone whenever a video is live. So guys, let's continue. And I, I called it, I, I called it. I even said that in, I think it was my headline in the last video. I think, was it my thumbnail picture when I might have just kind of gone, hey, is that you, Mr. Dent? Oh, he was. He totally was. And let's just break it down bef and get to the point that I am a genius. Maybe I really am a Sherlock Holmes. This episode is here to set up the battle. The initial Whiteley plotline is necessary. It is necessary. There is an overarching plot, a point that we're trying to get to. So we, he is a stepping stone to set up the big battle that we knew was coming and a battle that we needed. We are going to be seeing how far Milverton's reach really is. The fact that the man can bribe a police officer to tie up a loose end and remove that loose end entirely. Showing us that Milverton's tactics are of course very dark as well. This is also a YouTube not friendly video this week. So I am choosing my pictures very carefully because there's a lot of the red human bean juice within that episode that I could not show but we're seeing Milverton exploiting weakness he uses the weak to target the strong he uses the weak point the ill mother to target the police officer and now he's targeting Sam the brother of our boy Whiteley to get what he desires and it was quite obvious what he was going for again the setup to kill Sam to get that at least put Milton back in control because he he expected all of the events that we we're about to witness. We also get to see some lengths that Moriarty is starting to go to. I still think he could have done a little bit more, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But we have Fred eye in the situation up. Mr. Bond following Whiteley in the carriage as well. Everybody trying to keep an eye on the ground. Just to see when it's going to happen. What's going to happen. Try and keep an eye on the situation. But Milverton is going to make a very bold move. And it seems that Whiteley is trying to call him out. Or Whiteley has reached out to Milverton personally. I wasn't expecting the two to come face to face. But they do indeed. Where Whiteley decides that it's time to demand some conditions from Milverton. And show him that I actually have information that you don't want getting out so he's here to make a threat to the king of blackmailers himself one of those conditions already under attack so it was never going to happen we know that sam's about to be attacked which is one of the conditions he says that no, no harm coming to my family friends the scene initially kind of was there to try and fake that what whiteley is trying to have the upper hand he even has a moment of brief joy that is okay now i can continue forward but it's all just preemptive it really is just preemptive he's celebrating too soon because there's no way that milton was even going to buy this not a chance where the king of blackmailers is he's far more experienced there's no way that milton was exactly going to respond to this in kind whiteley was trying to fight fire with fire however Milverton is just better. He's had a lot more experience in blackmail and he isn't going to respond to a simple blackmail. This is the episode where we want to see the tide start to turn. We want to see Milverton's reach. We want to see him raising the stakes. Fred versus what I was calling Goliath. We have tiny Fred versus our big giant boy in a nice metal helmet. And it's definitely a sign that somebody has a jump. Somebody knew that Fred was there. Somebody knew he was watching. Somebody has the jump on them already. And at this point, Sam was already dead. It was already too late to even help. 
But Goliath's friend knows Fred's name. This could either be one of two things. Milverton really is just the eagle eye in the sky. He knows everything. Or it is personal. Perhaps there's a link between the two. I, I think it's probably more leaning on the fact that Milverton is an eagle eye. He knows everything. It's his duty to know everything. Whiteley sadly finds out the hard way. Milverton is not a force to be reckoned with. This is not a YouTube friendly section. So we can't really show too much. It is is a scene to make you angry. It's a scene to show you the power that Wil Milverton even commands. It's meant to make you realise Milverton is our bad guy here. This is what pure evil looks like. We find out, of course, that Sturridge, the man who ends up wiping out the entire family, he, of course, is being threatened. Once again, Milverton is making use of the weak to threaten. So he takes the family into custody and says, you know, you have to kill this person here or I'm going to kill these guys. Sadly, I think that family is probably already dead as well. There's no way he would have not. It's a loose end once again. Milverton simply just wanted to orchestrate some chaos and then he's going to wipe it out either or. Sadly, two sins do not make a right. Milverton at this point giving us a voiceover, telling us that he indeed is pure evil. He also tries to explain that Bad people enjoy seeing good people fall, do bad deeds because it's entertaining. So it entertains the devil. It's just a simple section to show you M Milverton's motives. The fact that he really just enjoys chaos. He enjoys preying on the weak. Trying to give you some backstory to the villain we're now welcoming to the stage. The series isn't going to be good without a good villain. So if Milverton isn't made out to be a really clever, masterminded, pure evil man, we're not going to feel... We're not going to feel that joy, that triumph, when eventually Moriarty works hard to overcome this evil. This is our twist, and this is also the next section. I already called it. This was the bit I said was predictable. Whiteley initially seemingly can't kill. He doesn't want to re return the favour. However, this is it. This is the fake out. The anime tried to fake me out, and it wasn't happening. I already called it. It was already used as a video catch. He becomes Two-Face. He literally, the way that blood is on his face. Our Mr. Harvey Dent, our white knight, the politician that everybody looks up to, suddenly becomes the new villain, which is what Milverton wanted. Milverton wanted him to become a murderer because it gives Milverton dirt on Whiteley. Whiteley can't make any progress now with his bill. Milverton can simply come crushing down and go, whoop, this guy's a murderer. You don't want to vote for him. He's going to jail. This is showing you that Milverton has gone to an, such an extreme length to get this one bit of dirt that he needs. He has to turn Whiteley into a devil just to stop him making any headway. There's no chance for equality or him in Parliament if he's standing there with blood on his hands. He knows this. He has turned our saintly MP into a devil and essentially Two-Face. It also allows him to stay in control of the of the game he is the puppet master right now everybody's acting exactly how he expected and orchestrated fred versus our two oddly fred does hold very well he is doing pretty well against two of them and presumably for quite a length of time at this point he is being distracted so he can't interfere with the murder of an entire household and he also can't interfere with whiteley becoming the new villain Lewis showing up to save Fred. The anime treated me very nicely this week. Sometimes it does like to treat me with a nice Lewis shot every so often. Where we get the message to them from Milverton. Milverton makes a personalised message to the Lord of Crime himself. Let's have a chat about the future. While staring out at the sea, the ocean. This might be a bit ad-libbed. I didn't get, the, get, didn't get it word for word. What can we draw from this? He plans to at some point meet face to face. The two might come and talk. But at some point it's going to take place overlooking the ocean. My thoughts would be that he might do it overlooking Dover Castle. Dover, the area, looking over the channel. The UK, the island. The channel is almost a lifeline. It's but it is Milton leaving a mark on the group. So they, they, they know that he is completely aware of them. Whiteley has become Two-Face. He still has the blood in his face. I am wondering if DC is going to be knocking on their door at some point going, can we have a word, of, word with you about Batman? Albert has been called out, reached out to. Whiteley tries to return the evidence and confess his own sins. Whiteley is ready at this point to atone with his life, which I think might have been a goal as well. I mean, this might have been something that I can't help but feel this lines up quite nicely with what Will's trying to do. But he is completely aware at this point that his bill, his future, what he was trying to achieve, it's gone. There's no way he can achieve the same thing because the rivals now have dirt on him that he can't even negotiate. He's not going to be able to get what he wants. Albert's brother. 
the appearance of Will at this point, which will show some connection and empathy almost for Whiteley, seeing that Albert too has a younger brother, as he has just lost his own younger brother. I think it's there to make him feel a little bit more of a comfort seeing this, that Albert too was also a brother looking after a brother. But Will at this point explaining the setup and exactly who he is. Will at this point as well has already helped people who are in the same position, who want revenge but not revenge and who want to die. He's already helped people like this and this falling perfect into him now and we now see him willing to take on his life, take on the case and put on a new performance which is going to line up quite nicely with what he's trying to achieve. But we're going to have Whiteley's life for equality. I had a feeling this might be the plot line we were going to use. But it is a shame that he that Will didn't act any sooner. And he did last week waste his time with what I'm still considering a waste of time with the test. Will indeed making Whiteley the symbol of equality. Which again is very similar to the Two-Face line where Batman ends up not telling telling the truth that, you know, this guy actually killed people. They, they they decide to use the image of the saintly Harvey Dent as a hero, as a martyr for justice. Whilst the same thing is happening here, Whiteley is going to be used as a sign of equality. They're going to use tragedy and overcome and use it as a strength. So when we see Whiteley appearing in, in his carriage, coming to the Houses of Parliament, with him smiling, using the tragedy of his death of his family to unite the people with him. The people now stand with him through tragedy. He is simply just another puppet on Will's stage, a bit like Sherlock, the same kind of way, where we hear the White Knight title finally being given. And this is when we see Whiteley, sadly, as planned, dying to the hands of Will. I did initially think it was Lewis because we couldn't see the face and it is a knife and I was like, oh, has Lewis finally gone stabby stabby? No, it is Will at this point. Will does make his appearance. I do like the fact that he uses a wire snatch to get the hell out of there. It's quite a nice snazzy exit. It is a public execution. Publicly executing Whiteley, who has just been delivering his speech on standing for equality, is perfect. This is exactly what Will needs. We have turned this man into a martyr and the point here is we're going to unite everybody. We're going to unite the public who want to stand behind Whiteley who was fighting for equality and then suddenly his life has been snuffed out by the Lord of Crime. So he is making it so there is a common enemy. Common enemy is Lord of Crime. He has just killed the symbol of equality. You now need to be focusing your anger on the dest destroyer of equality. Karma starts to play during the entire public announcement. The amazing soundtrack, the Moriarty the Patriot main theme. Please do check out the live performance by Tachibana herself. It is a fantastic piece and just listening to it through headphones and seeing everybody play it really does just bring up those shivers on the spine, gives you the goose pimples. Where we hear the famous line again, catch me if you can. This is a hook we are trying to bait a certain a certain crazy person to grab the attention finally. Sherlock being summoned to the stage, we know that he's not going to be able to turn this one down. It is the same line that Moriarty Will himself even says to Sherlock on the train when we have the fun little sequence of the two working together to try and work out who set up poor Watson, poor mummy. But there is no doubt at this point, even if he had no doubts at this point who it could be, using the same line and then suddenly the Lord of Crime using the same line, it is a link. It's going to be linking the person that Sherlock seemed to hone in on after the ship incident. He started honing in on Will at that point. Then hearing that line, it's definitely a link between the two. But we're not getting into it because nobody likes me giving my opinion on that section. Patterson in position to spur the public unification on, telling them, that's it, we have to get hold of the Lord of Crime, chase him, catch him. Whiteley sadly did have to die to make way for equality. His death was a necessary loss, a necessary evil in that sense. It would have come to light eventually that he had committed a sin and this would have been used against him and it would have stopped the one thing that he really wanted, the equality being passed because he still believes in equality even at the end. So instead he was turned into a martyr and Will took on the burden, Whiteley's burden, the murder burden. It all fits into Will's plan. It perfectly fits, a bit too perfectly fitted. That fact that, that now he can turn everything that's going on, turn the tides once more, to lean in his favour. It is now setting up the battle, the necessary evil versus pure evil. This is what the entire arc, the White Knight arc, is there to do. It is setting up the stage to have our battle, Will versus Milverton. 
Next week is Tease the Sign of Mary. This has definitely got to be Watson's soon to be beloved. It's going to be interesting to see this addition. Also, going to be interesting to see how they portray Watson's counterpart, Watson's heart, other half as well. It's going to be interesting. But it seems that we're going to have Sherlock returning, of course, at the request of Will. This was bound to happen. He definitely. He definitely cast a line when he said that line and he's now putting in a big fish. Sherlock is the big fish. It is a very nice tie-in. I like the way the second half of this arc actually played out. It's still not my favourite arc in the world. I still do fully believe that we didn't even need to waste time with setting up a public test with Will. You could have literally just had Albert take an interest in somebody who liked equality because it's kind of what Will's playing for you could have had him then reach out you could have just skipped that entire section i do believe that could have been skipped but it is a great introduction to our villain the main point of this arc is our villain milverton setting up the initial rivalry seeing how dangerous a man he really is seeing what pure evil actually looks like and setting up a counterpart to will Will also summoning Sherlock is something I said that might happen, that he might get desperate where he needs to have Sherlock on the case. And I think this is going to be what's going to occur. I think indirectly, the two are going to be working to the goal to try and bring down Milverton, which I really do look forward to. I think it's going to be a, a very clever tie up. I, also, I always get excited in games where the, the villain teams up with the hero for a little bit to bring down an even greater villain it's the whole kind of dante virgil kind of thing that i do champion and if you are interested in devil may cry that i am currently playing through game five so go check out the breakdowns there is a folder you can see all the current available parts in there so guys fantastic episode i think it was a better episode than last week still a little bit on the predictable side but it was very good. I liked it. And I am looking forward to seeing how we're going next. So we have finally got our villain on the stage. How are we going to play and counter him? Have a good day, guys. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves. Bye-bye, guys.